Hi guys, um, back again for chapter 10 of the race course, race horse who wouldn't gallop. Even Boris wasn't awake when the rest of the house started moving. It was the day of the race at Salisbury and everyone knew what they needed to do. If they'd forgotten, they only had to look at the timetable Charlie had stuck on the wall next to the back door. There's the timetable. Looks like one of Grandad's timetables. 5 a.m. Joe and Harry milk cows. 5.30 a.m. Dad wash cattle truck. Charlie and Larry lead out noble warrior and Percy clean tack plaited manes oil hooves. 6 a.m. Mum feed pigs, chickens and Boris. Make picnic for journey? No cake. 6.30 a.m. Breakfast. 7 a.m. Leave for Salisbury. Charlie gave Noble Warrior a small feed that morning and encouraged him to drink a little bit of water. He mustn't have too much, she explained, as he turned his big head towards her. You won't be able to gallop if you've got a bucket of water swimming around in your tummy. She pulled his ears and kissed him on the soft bit of his muzzle. She could feel butterflies in her stomach. You're going to be a racehorse today, a real racehorse. As Charlie headed back into the house, she heard her parents talking in the kitchen. She paused at the door, not wanting to interrupt them. I've written the bank a letter, her mum was saying. They've agreed to extend the overdraft, but only if we start repaying it in the next two months. If we don't, the bank will make us sell the farm. They can't do that, said Mr Bass. They can, darling, and they will. Charlie's heart sank. Sell Folly Farm? Where would they go? She couldn't imagine her family in one of the trendy flats in town. There might be one solution, said Mr Bass reluctantly. We always said Noble Warrior was a business investment. Everyone understood, including Charlie. If we get an offer to buy him, we've got to take it. This might come down to the farm or the horse. I'm not sure we can afford to keep both. After breakfast, the family piled into the cattle truck. Charlie was very quiet. After what her parents had said, she couldn't face trying to be jolly with her brothers. And besides, there wasn't room. Move your bum a bit, Larry. You're sitting on the handbrake. Mrs Bass shoved the gear stick into first and they rumbled down the drive. Charlie tried singing quietly to herself to keep the nerves at bay and try and forget what she had heard. Six hours later, she didn't have the energy or the voice to sing. Instead, she had tears streaming down her face. Most athletes will say that they learn more from their defeats than from their victories. They will always find the positives, even in a situation that seems to be nothing but negative. Charlie did her best to think like this, but... Try as she might, she couldn't come up with the bright side. They had laughed. The crowd had actually laughed as Percy led Noble Warrior into the paddock. Then Brian Dennis had come up with a face like thunder. What do you think this is, a blinking circus? I'm the champion jockey. I don't need to be trailing around after a potty pony. Get him out of here. Charlie had tried to tell her that it would be a mistake, but he didn't listen. Then Noble Warrior got upset and started dancing on the spot. And when Mr Bass tried to give Brian Dennis a leg up, his tweed suit wouldn't let him reach high enough and Brian Dennis ended up in the grass. There was no upside to that at all. And it went downhill from there. Noble Warrior, Warrior planted himself on the race course and refused to canter down to the start. So Brian Dennis had taken his whip and given him three sharp cracks on the backside. Charlie's father looked horrified but it was her mother who reacted the most surprisingly. Mrs Bass had sprinted across the lawn in front of the grandstand to accost the champion jockey. I'll have that, she shouted, snatching his whip. Don't you dare hit my daughter's horse, you mean little man. Charlie remembered the look of fury on her mother's face. She was proud of her, especially considering she wasn't a natural horsewoman. She had never been as close to noble warrior as the rest of the family, and to be honest, Charlie hadn't realised how much she cared. 
Let me lead you, Charlie had said to Brian Jen Dennis. We might be able to get him to the start if I run with, him, run with you, but it will take a while. They eventually arrived at the start with Noble Warrior in a muck lather of sweat and Brian Dennis in a sullen, silent mood. With Percy nowhere to be seen, Noble Warrior was disorientated. A team of stall handl handlers were, were around him, pulling him forward and pushing him from behind. He didn't like it and once again planted himself firmly on the spot. He wouldn't budge forwards, backwards or sideways. Brian Dennis lifted his arm to smack him again before he'd realised he didn't have a whip anymore. It might be best if I took over, Charlie had said quietly. She led Noble Warrior forward into his narrow starting stall and kissed him on the nose. As she ducked under the gate though, Charlie suddenly realised that for all the fitness work they had done with Noble Warrior, he'd never started out of stalls before. So it wasn't surprising that when the gates opened and all the other horses leapt forward, he just stood there. Brian Dennis had growled and shouted and kicked, but he wouldn't budge. Go on, Noddy, Charlie had clicked at him from the sidelines. Canter on and we'll see you at the finish. Looking back, she had to laugh at the thought of the helpless champion jockey on a horse who refused to run. It didn't matter what she said or what Brian Dennis tried to do. Noble Warrior would not budge. The rest of the horses galloped away and he just stood there. Brian Dennis dismounted while he was still in the stalls and got a lift back to the weighing room in the ambulance. Thanks for making me a laughing stock, he spluttered at Charlie as he drove off. I'll leave you to get that useless donkey out of here. It took Charlie ten minutes of gentle coaxing, but eventually Noble Warrior came out of the stalls backwards. The race was long over. Charlie led him back to the paddock while the crowd clapped sarcastically. Some of them laughed again, but others were angry. One man threw a betting slip at her. You've cost me ten quid, you Abby shouted. Don't suppose you'll be paying me back, will you? As Charlie led Noble Warrior back to the stables, she noticed a sharp-faced man checking him out. When she went back to the weighing room later to return the number cloth, she'd seen him, she'd, she'd seen him in conversation with Brian Dennis. Do you think they'd sell, the man was asking. He might look handsome, the jockey replied, but I'm telling you, don't touch him. Back in the, back in the cattle truck, Charlie cried into Noble Warrior's mane. Oh, Noddy, she said. I know you didn't mean to mess everything up, but now no one will want to buy you. There's only one way out of this. We just have to win the derby. Charlie took a deep breath. There was so much to do. They needed to see if they could get permission from the senior steward at Epsom for Percy to accompany Noble Warrior in the paddock and on the way to the start. They needed a new head collar, rope and paddock sheet so they didn't look as if he'd just come off the farm. Joe needed to get his jockey's licence because it was clear that after the embarrassment at Salisbury, no one else would be willing to ride. Finally, they needed to work out a way of getting Percy from the start of the derby to the finish before Noble Warrior. There was plenty to ponder. Before the cattle truck crossed the border into Hampshire, Charlie had stopped crying. When they were 10 miles from home, she had started planning. And by the time she was thrown sideways by the potholes of Folly Farm, she honestly saw no reason why Noble Warrior couldn't win the derby. And that's another thing we can do with the prize money, she muttered to herself. Get this driver resurfaced. That's the end of chapter 10. So next time I see you guys, it'll be chapter 11. Stay safe and uh, hope you've enjoyed Easter and uh, see you on the other side. Don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to Grandad's channel.